Hello, Michael here with another RenderMan22 tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at roughness maps and how you do those as requested by several people recently. Um, so first I'll show you what I've done. I created the roughness map in 3D code. You can use whatever package you want. You can do it in Maya. If you want to do it procedurally, you can do it with a noise filter. Uh, once you understand how these roughness maps work, you'll just be able to do it with any alpha channel map essentially. So um, you can see here I've got this coppery type um, map that I've created and if you're using 3D code or substance or something like that and you're doing an export, um, make sure that you have your diffuse if you want a color channel, roughness, um, which will just be from the roughness channel of the material. In 3D code you need to make sure that's enabled uh, when you create the smart material. Um, bump if you want it and specular face color not necessary but it will help this particular one if you don't use specular face color it's essentially not going to drive the a variation in specularity over the surface of the material um, but you'll see that in a second anyway so I've already exported this so I'll show you what it looks like all right so here is our roughness map the areas in which are white are the areas that are going to be rough because anything closer to a value of one or, or anything that's not a value of zero, zero is the presence of roughness in this instance. So if you want it to be specular or more reflective, you want values of zero, darker colors, darker values, um, and anything up towards a whiter color um, or a value of one is going to give you roughness. So if we jump into Maya, I'm just going to chuck this cube in. Uh, that's not a cube, that's a sphere. <laughs> it's been a long day. Um, and I'm going to assign a Pixar surface shader to it and I'm going to bring up the Hypershade editor. So I'll just do all of this. So we're going to create Pixar texture. Um, I'm just going to hit Control D on that three times. So I get four of those in total. Um, the first one's going to be our diffuse map is here and I've done all these in linear um, uh, files so they're all 32 bits so I don't need to linearize these so they might look a bit weird there but they'll look good in the render so we're gonna run the result RGB from that into the diffuse color and then the next one I'm gonna grab is the specular face color and we're gonna run just hitting two on that uh, node on the keyboard and just gonna run the result RGB into the specular face color. Make sure you don't plug it into the rough specular, the rough specular face color. Those are That's a different channel to what your primary specular is. It's a secondary specular channel if required. So I'm just gonna quickly name these as I go actually. All right, so this is gonna be the copper roughness. And we'll open that up. Now, the thing about this is you're gonna grab your RGB out and try and plug it into your specular roughness, but you're gonna notice that's not gonna plug in. It's because it wants a um, alpha. So you wanna grab your specular roughness like that from the result alpha out. So if you wanna expand that, just hit three on the keyboard, two just to show your ins and outs. And then this one is actually, we don't need this one. We need a normal, Pixar normal map. So tab and type in normal. All right, and then we're just gonna open up the normal map. And run the result in out into the bump normal. All right, so we'll just jump in with a light. I'm gonna use a disc light because it looks better on spheres. And we will run the render. I'll do it in the render view because I know people get very upset when I don't use it and I use it instead. I prefer it. All right, so here it is. So you can see that the areas um, have a, a lighter area, uh, which is basically your diffused area, and then the area here, which is your um, specular era area. So you get your roughness and you've got your non-rough parts. So I've just put an HDR in the background and you can see what that whole map looks like with the variation in surface. So it does certainly help to have a normal map if you can. Um, if you can't, then you could obviously, if you're using a procedural, you could use a procedural to bump based on the roughness. So the areas that are rougher could be higher. If you're looking for a metal type thing, generally it's sort of like 
rust or oxidization oxidization tends to lift the surface of the material so you'd find that the rougher areas will tend to be a little bit off the surface of the shinier areas anyway but um yeah that's pretty much all there is to it for this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it if you have click the like button so other people can find it on youtube and if you haven't already subscribe because i do a couple of these tutorials every week or once a week at the very least if you want to stay up to date with these tutorials, check out the Facebook or check out my Instagram. I post there fairly regularly. Links in the description. That's it for now though. Thank you very much for watching and happy rendering.